So, good afternoon. My name is Ralph Sola. I'm coming from a National Research Scientific Center in France. And today I'm going to try to give you the big picture of what we work on ROS. First of all, about the, the context of work, we have uh, an education program which is an European master in vision and robotics called Vibot. This is an Erasmus Mundus program where we collaborate with two other universities, University in Girona in Spain and Hyderabad University in uh, Scotland. And on the other side we have a LE2I research group where we do uh, research for image processing, computer science and electronics. This is a quite big unit. And my team is focused on non-classical imaging. I will show you some, uh, some examples. Um, the motivation of this talk, as we've been introduced before, is to get the idea of how we started ROS, how we use it, and we wanted to share it uh, with the old ROS community, which is uh, here today. Um, we started in 2013, so only two years ago, and at this moment we have two main challenges to face. Uh, the first one was to design some introduction modules uh, about uh, mobile robotics and computer vision linked together, and in parallel we have also to do research and development in this field uh, to do some internship works, projects, applications, all around uh, this uh, problematic. And of course, because uh, we have to uh, optimize the work, we have to, to, to choose a unique platform. And also, of course, that's why we, we went to ROS. Um, I want to mention at this point that we need also to, 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 to face the problem that we have people coming from a lot of very different backgrounds. We're not roboticians. We don't teach to uh, students coming from pure computer science background. People are coming from everywhere, electrical, mechanical, engineering, and everything. And that's also part of the challenge to, to be addressed. So I will show you how we learn ROS first, very quick introduction to this, how we design our education program for BSc and MSc, and how we do some research with an example of omnidirectional vision. And I will finish with a application development related to precision agriculture. Of course, I will give you the, the first work and so on. How we learned it? Uh, that's quite difficult at the beginning, of course. I remember in 2013, we were sweating a lot to say how, how we can get into that. Uh, of course, we started with the official tutorials from the Ross Wiki. We read a lot of books. Thank you for all these books, thank you to the authors, because that's very good to start. We had attended also to workshops. A national workshops has been organized by a network of uh, research groups, where a guy from ETH, from Zurich, gave us very tremendous tutorials. And of course, we attend to Roscon, other shows, robotic shows, to, to discuss all of this topic. And that's very important to have all of this, to gather the information together. Um, how we teach it now. We learned it, we move to the how to teach it. We do an intensive training sessions where we do some tutorials uh, for to get an introduction to the middleware. Some of students met, meet uh, Ubuntu operating system for the first time. So we have to get a big introduction to everything. We go to packages, simulation, basic control. Of course, next, that's quite classical, but nodes with Python programming, we focus on the launch files, we go to C++ programming, and all of this is uh, next implemented on the TurtleBot 2 platform, which is tremendous for, for our applications. We organize also in parallel some technical workshops, and attend or even organize introduction in summer schools. We dedicated a special room for the, the robotics project. The, our robotics laboratory is equipped with uh, uh, 12 uh, TurtleBot 2 plus other kind of robots, and that's very important to have a special place dedicated for all of this, where the students can come at full time or free time to practice. Um, for the BSc project, next they move to the project development. They have quite 
a large amount of uh, time to dedicate to this. They go for motion control. They integrate next the uh, planar lenser rangefinder. We use a Robopic uh, APR LiDAR, which is really nice for our, our use. And next, they move to navigation and localization with uh, all these uh, different packages that are implemented. It leads to something like this, which is uh, quite modest for the beginning, but they, let's say, in a certain amount of time, manage to implement all of this from scratch. And that's what is important. They start from scratch, and they, at the end, they're very motivated to have the robot running. Um, next step for the MSc students, so they go for further, so they do all what the BSc did, plus they add computer vision tasks. And the idea next is to do the patrolling, and at certain waypoints, they do a special task related to computer vision. So they remain on all of this, and after they implement SMAC to do the, the, the different uh, uh, tasks. Uh, just to show you, so we've got a state machine running uh, SMAC, and at every special waypoint, they go for voice recognition, uh, tag detection, tag following, uh, 3D uh, segmentation and everything. They're quite free to implement their own scenario at the end of the project. And that's very motivating. Students are very happy about this. Um, to show you what is effective at the end of this training program is, we, I will take an example of one student from Infra University of Malaysia uh, that spent a few months in our university and he worked, was very interested in uh, UAVs, and he started with a mechanical engineering background. This was the first time he did pro programming. And he went into the R drone autonomy and the R toolkit in order to do some uh, uh, tag following, tag tracking, and all these kind of algorithms to, to do the real development and implementation later. And he is now going on and he's publishing now something uh, related to patrol and indoor surveillance uh, scenarios, so it works. I mean, people can get very involved very quickly in this uh, kind of development. About research, I, I will just want to show you now an example of omnidirectional vision for mobile robotics example. Uh, we work with uh, fish eye lenses, it means very wide angle lenses in order to have a large environment uh, perception, and we designed a kind of special hybrid sensor where we, ha we wanted to have the two fish eyes put it back to back, and after that, performing offline calibration, we have a full panoramic spherical view. That's becoming quite classical, but we have here a, a quite quick implementation. This work has been done with the PAL Robotics company, by uh, Jeremy Derry, which is around. And we implemented two UI cameras plus two fisheye lenses in order to do uh, quite real time with big coma uh, capture of the whole environment. And the spherical images is being reconstructed later. Uh, and we designed some special packages that can be found at this GitHub repos repository. This kind of approach is now being studied in order to see how this kind of uh, sensor plus spherical image can lead to um, better results about localization in very dense environment where we, we can see the full environment and perform some computer vision and next localization uh, algorithms. And it can also be used successfully with the Oculus Rift to have uh, augmented reality perception of the full environment, put it in your eyes when you rotate, of course, you can see the spherical image directly. That's a quite straightforward implementation, and it's working because of ROS, of course. And thanks to ROS. <laughs> uh, last step about the application development. We come from Burgundy, so the wine yard is very important in our region. So we work for, the, for this uh, industry in order to study how uh, computer vision uh, solutions can help for the sustainable spray application of uh, phytosanitary products in order to reduce or to adapt the amount of products that are being sprayed with regard to the leaf density of the wine yard. That's quite 
basic to image. It means here you see there are some holes, some missing plants. That's very classical from the burgundy uh, uh, wine yard. So that's stupid to spray some product at this space. There's nothing. We, it's just a waste of product and very bad for the environment. So the idea is to drive a tractor with a sprayer in order just to adapt the amount of spray we do at, uh, when the, the tractor go in the wine yard rows. So in order to drive this, we have first to do a kind of prototype to see if the feasibility was okay with this. So we used our Robotnik Summit XL robot, uh, quite compact 4x4 robot, and we mounted on it uh, a LiDAR sensor, and we just rely on the odometry with the encoders, plus a gyroscope to do, let's say, basic odometry when we move along the, the, uh, the rows. So when we implement it, it leads to something like this. We've got here the, the, the mobile robot driven in the wire rows, and you see here an, an embedded camera to see what's going on. And we capture the 3D data along the, the movement of the, of the robot. And that's quite straightforward to have a, an environment measurement quite quickly and related to this kind of, uh, let's say, classical use of the, of the laser pipeline nodes and so on. When we've got all of this data, when we move, we have here a quite, let's say, basic segmentation in 3D, where here we do, we do uh, surrounding boxes to estimate the leaf density, which is directly linked to the point density measured in 3D. And so, let's say, step by step, we estimate the density. We have a kind of certain percentage of, of leaf density. And according to this, we drive an input-output module to drive the nozzles afterwards. So we have demonstrated here that it is feasible. The computer uh, vision on mobile robotic solution can be okay. So the next step is to embed all of this on a tractor, and not for the moment on the robot, because the tractor goes in the rows very regularly, something like 13 times in a season. To show you uh, let's say, an idea of what's going to be the further implementation, because we, the, the guys from mechanical engineering still need to modify the nozzles. The sprayer is not, let's say, ready for this kind of, of uh, drive for the moment. We have implemented a kind of rendering based on the, on the real uh, data measured from the rose bags and so on. And here, this is an example of basic use with only one nozzle just driven binary, but of course we're going to go forward later. This is an idea of what's going on, so we're still working on it. Okay, so about ROS for education and applied research. Um, we really want to emphasize that okay, that's feasible. We can start ROS from scratch and go for it very, I mean, quickly. Uh, it needs training. It's not easy, and it needs also networking to share the ideas. That's very, very important. This is the message we want to share with you today. And you need to practice, of course. Typically, if you're not a robotician, Turtlebot 2 can be a very good platform. Uh, be careful. You probably all know of this, but the Rossified hardware is very, very important, of course. If you've got something that is already compatible with ROS, you're going to save some time uh, instead of trying to Rossify it yourself. But that's another story. And nowadays, we consider ROS as uh, an open source acquisition and processing platform for uh, all our applications. Not only for mobile robotics, but this is a very uh, tremendous uh, platform for everything when you go for instrumentation. OK, so that's it. Um, Thank you for your attention, and this is a unique opportunity to thank really the ROS community for developing all of that, the software, the hardware, and so on. Thank you so much. All right. Any questions? Sorry? Okay. Can you... Were you using a LiDAR sensor? 
Yeah. Oh, actually, we don't create a map. And that is, uh, let's say, the trick of this kind of application. Of course, you could go to, uh, let's say, measure the whole rows and to create a dense map of the whole one-yard parcel. Okay? But it's not the, this is not the problem we're facing right now. We're doing it just for, uh, let's say, a few dozens of centimeter uh, buffer, where we do the measurement, and directly just after that, let's say the sensor is at the, the, the front of the, of the tractor, and during this uh, small amount of time, we drive the nozzles of the sprayer just after. But let's say we just forget after that what, what has been done. But of course, later we could go for a map. But it's not the, progress, the problem we address right now. Okay, but of course, doing some maps for monitoring, increasing uh, the, the knowledge of what's going on from year to year is a very important problem. Did I answer correctly to your question? Thank you.